welcome once again to RF transceiver design uh, course and we are at module 3 lecture 15 of transceiver architecture. So, in last class we have just stopped at discussing the heterodyne uh, receiver, we will continue with the heterodyne receiver architecture. We have all already seen the what are the aim of the basic aim of the receiver design that is uh, one is a uh, amplification then there is a, a dynamic range in order to mitigate the dynamic range variable gain amplification then there is a down conversion and then filtering. So, these are the four basic aim of receiver design and now we will discuss the receiver architecture. So, we we, are, we were at a heterodyne architecture. So, the basic hit means in heterodyne architecture omega rf will never be equal to omega l o. So, omega rf will be either high or low than omega l o. So, in this example that what we have taken in the last class that is uh, here omega rf or omega i n. I can also write omega i n which is not equal to omega l o. So, here your omega i n in this case is higher than the omega l o and this is called the higher uh, means low uh, l o injection because your pre l o frequency is a low. So, when you have when you are applying the omega i n is greater than omega l o you will get at while down conversion your signal at the both the side of the band will be down converted. So, because there is a omega rf is not equal to omega l o there is one problem of the image which is coming that we will discuss. What is the problem of image? Uh, your desired signal is at omega i n. So, this is your desired signal and if there is a some uh, other signal which is just at the twice of omega f. So, if this is your omega l o and this omega l o the at the uh, this is your desired i f. So, this is I can write omega l o minus omega i n that is your i f frequency. What is the i f frequency? Omega l o minus omega i n. So, if there is a at the same i f omega i f if there is a some other signal which is not wanted signal then this is called a image because this is not a wanted signal and it is uh, we also not aware that what are the image signal power will be it might be any uh, block cursor which is not a desired signal then if it is lying omega i f at the range of omega i f then that will also down convert. So, there is a desired signal. So, this is a desired signal and image signal if there is a omega cos omega l o is applied you will get the, this is your desired signal and image will also be uh, down converted and it will corrupt as we uh, as we have seen it will corrupt your S N R. it will uh, reduce your sensitivity. So, we need to avoid the image. So, that is a big problem in the uh, heterodyne receiver. What is the image frequency? We can easily write down I omega i m which is equal to omega in because this is omega in plus 2 omega f is given by the image frequency. Now, what is the omega f? So, if you write omega i f in this case is equal to omega l o minus omega in then that will nothing but come as a 2 omega l o minus omega in. So, this is you can find out the any image frequency by using this equation. For example, uh, if my desired signal is lying at a 2.4 gigahertz and if my L O frequency is at 2.3 gigahertz. Let us say uh, because it is high I, I will write 2.5 gigahertz. If my L O frequency is 2.5 gigahertz. So, uh, what is the I F here? It is 100 megahertz. 
Then if I will add another 100 megahertz because it is a 2 omega f, then my image frequency will be at 2.6 gigahertz. So, this is how image can be written. Now, there is another possibility also that if your desired signal will be at 2.6 gigahertz, if your LO is 2.5 gigahertz, then there is an image will be at 2.4 gigahertz. So, image can be any either of the side. So, this is called the because your LO frequency in this case is higher than your input or RF frequency that is called high LO injection. In this case, omega LO is less than omega IM, IN, then it is a lower side LO injection. So, image problem is severe and we need to filter out this image. So, that is why just after the amplification, you need a image eject filter in a heterodyne receiver. So, the one we have tried to do the band selection filter, one filter we have used for band selection that we already discussed in order to remove the unwanted blocker out of the band. Then this is another filter that is an image eject filter in order to reduce the image. So, here uh, in this example, if we try to, if we want to filter out the 2.6 gigahertz, so we should have a filter which will reduce this image and that is called the image reject filter and that, that image is lying at 2 omega IF. So, you can easily observe that if your IF frequency is high, if your omega IF is higher, if it is at higher side, let us say if it is higher, then uh, you can easily reject the image by using the filter. So, generally in intro time, we try to use the omega IF which will be higher to reject the image. And there is a problem while channel selection also that we will see in the next slide. So, image rejection versus channel selection. So, I uh, we already have discussed that we cannot select the channel uh, by just adding a filter uh, initially because we require very high Q filter. That is why we uh, precede the channel selection later on. Now, uh, when whenever we try to select the channel or reject the image, there is a trade-off is coming. What is the trade-off? So, as I told, here your omega IF, if it is higher, if your omega IF frequency is higher, then it is going to cover many channels in your band because this, this filter is going to cover many uh, channels. Then your channel selection will be difficult. So, in this case, when you try to select this channel, this part of the channel will also come. But let us say when you want to have the omega IF low, so in this case, uh, so the, in this example, your omega IF is high and in this case, your omega IF is low. So, this is a high and your omega IF is low. So, when your omega IF is low, you can, when you are selecting the channel, you can easily select the channel. But some of the image portion will come in while receiving the signal. So, you will have a very sufficient image will come. So, there is a, always a trade-off and based on the application and what are the type of image which is going to come, uh, you need to consider the uh, what is the IF frequency, omega IF that you want to choose for your heterodyne receiver. So, uh, same line whatever uh, has been added here, a high IF, 
allows substantial rejection of image whereas a low IF helps with the suppression of in-band interference. So, high IF has the advantage of reducing the image, however, low IF has the advantage of su suppression of in-band or in-channel, uh, it means inside the band, all the other channels interference. So, this is an important uh, trade-off image rejection versus channel selection. There is a another kind of receiver that is also used in certain application that is a dual down conversion in order to mitigate the effect, in order to uh, consider the both channel selection as well as image rejection. So, here uh, this heterodyne receiver will do the dual down conversion, sometimes it is also called a super heterodyne because uh, we are employing a two times down conversion. We will try to see at each stage how uh, it will work. So, this is a uh, signals are coming at point A. So, at point A we are getting this all signals, there are interference. Let us say this is certain band 1 band, this is another band, this is a third band and first we require to get this band. So, what will happen? There is a first band pass filter which will select this band. So, what will happen that when we try to select this band, we will have this band, all other components are lowering down. So, at point B, so this is at point B, all other po portion are lower down. However, there is an image, let us say if this frequency is an image frequency, there is an image is also there. So, you require a uh, band pass filter, another band pass filter which will reject the image. So, at point C, you can see that this image has been lowered down by selecting the certain omega IF. And uh, then we will down convert this signal. So, at the point D, uh, other components are very far and there is a down conversion is going to happen. So, this is a down converted signal, but you already have a uh, channels because entire band you have down converted. So, then you need a channel select filter in order to suppress these channels. So, these channels will be suppressed, however, they because there is a small IF will be there. So, there is a small IF is mentioned here at the point E. Again, now you employ the, uh, this is down converted at omega RF minus omega LO1 and then uh, here it is down converted at omega RF minus omega LO1 minus omega LO2. So, the uh, frequency, I have frequency is, uh, this is omega, this is omega I have 1, you can write it as a omega I have 1. So, I will write it down, omega I have 1, that is omega RF minus omega LO1, omega I have 2, you can also write omega, uh, omega I have 1 minus omega LO2 or you can also write omega RF minus omega LO1 minus omega LO2. So, if you just try to add the certain frequency omega RF uh, and omega LO if you choose. Uh, you need to choose omega f1 and omega f2 what you want and based on that you can choose the frequency omega lo1 and omega lo2. So, here at the uh, point g again you select the channel which is a desired channel then you can suppress your other channel component significantly and then just use the if amplifier at your frequency desired frequency you can amplify your desired signal and this there is some image will be there. So, your SNR 
will improve. And in this case, because it is a dual town conversion, you can uh, easily select the image, you can easily reject the image and sele select the channel. So, this is this architecture is employing how many let us say band pass filter 1, band pass filter 2, band pass filter 3 and band pass filter 4. So, it is employing 4 band pass filter. So, you required a many op chip components and it is adding the more complexity uh, and uh, your hardware will Im increase. However, the accuracy is much better. We will also see the advantage of uh, hetero super heterodyne architecture. Then there is a another kind of architecture that is called a direct conversion receiver where your uh, omega RF which is equal to omega L and uh, in the first uh, heterodyne architecture there is a problem of mixing spurs where different omega intermodulation plus plus or minus m omega lo1 plus or minus n omega lo2 will come and it will add more mixing spurs and th that will uh, reduce the sensitivity also. So, due to the non-ideal mixing and LO generation, mixing of RF input by all LO harmonics will also happen. So, we you need to have a sufficient linearity on all other blocks in order to suppress this spurs. However, when you have omega RF which is equal to omega LO, your problem of image will be solved. But when we are using omega, uh, when we are using a direct conversion receiver, you need a quadrature down conversion that employs the uh, down conversion cos omega LO and sin omega LO, which is a quadrature signal you need to apply. Because there is a problem of, let us say image you can reduce, but there is a problem of self image and that will be cancelled out by using the uh, quadrature uh, down conversion. So, what is a self image? We try to understand what is a self image. So, there is a symmetrical uh, modulation. What exactly symmetrical modulation where your amplitude is not changing? Your amplitude will remain uh, constant mostly in a frequency or phase modulation. We have already discussed in basics of uh, uh, wireless communication and we have seen that your amplitude will remain constant in a frequency or phase modulation. So, you can mention your spectrum as a S, SF or this is SF minus FLO and it is a symmetric on the both side. However, if your baseband amplitude is varying and you are, uh, you are using the uh, modulation which is uh, this amplitude is varying and amplitude modulation. In that case, your uh, carrier has a uh, different amplitude and that will have a spectrum has a different amplitude on one side and on other side it has a different amplitude. So, if this frequency is a 2.4 gigahertz and let us say it, it has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz. Or that bandwidth in other part of the bandwidth will be image for this part of the bandwidth. So, if, if we try to visualize this is omega minus omega f1 and this is plus omega f1 and that will coincide over each other. So, the right portion of the uh, signal will be on the left portion left side and left will be on the uh, right side. So, there is an overlap and this problem is a called a self image. The image is happening in your uh, band uh, desired band itself and in order to reduce this problem of self image, we are using a quadrature model quadrature down conversion and that is why here uh, that is why here whatever we have used is a uh, whatever we have tried to use in direct conversion is a 
quadrature which is a cos omega LO and sin omega LO T. So, here direct conversion receiver what is important is omega RF is equal to omega LO and your problem of image is a solved. Before going to the more detail about the direct conversion receiver, uh, I, I just uh, kept one slide of the for understanding what is a self image because there are some modern introduction receiver architectures are also available and which uses both uh, the combination of the uh, heterodyne as well as the direct conversion. So, in this case, uh, there is a omega LO1 and omega LO2 and you uh, this omega LO2 and omega LO1 has been chosen such that it will come as a your omega RF. Uh, omega RF. So, how exactly it will be written? This is omega in which is equal to if, if I will try to consider only one LO signal that is LO1 and then I will divide the LO signal by half and I will apply the because it is easily to divide add the divider on chip and you can generate IQ generate IQ signal uh, by using the divider. So, this LO signal has been divided in half and it is applied to the both the mixer. So, your omega input if it is equal to omega LO1 plus uh, another omega LO2 which is omega LO1 by 2. So, this can be written as a 3 by 2 omega LO1. You can also write omega LO1 which is equal to 2 by 3 omega input. So, let us say if you have a uh, very high, if your frequency let us say is 60 gigahertz, then how much LO1 you require that is a around 40 gigahertz. So, uh, here it has another advantage also let us say if you are designing your uh, receiver at very high frequency uh, and if your LO requirement if you can reduce in this case you required LO frequency. So, the first LO is a 40 and then there is a division of 2 that is a 20. So, your signal will be down converted to the, to the 0. So, this uh, architecture required a uh, the LO frequency is lesser than your desired 60 uh, gigahertz frequency. So, it will reduce your power consumption significantly. And why uh, it is called a sliding IF? Because here your uh, omega LO will slide uh, the omega in because it is a using the same uh, mathematics that is omega LO1 will read if you try to reduce the RF frequency, uh, your omega LO frequency or omega IF frequency also reduce by that term. So, this is how the uh, sliding IF receiver works. This is some more example also you can think of. So, he here you can also make uh, 1 by 4. So, there is a 48 gigahertz signal and then there is a 1 by 4 has been employed uh, that is uh, 12 gigahertz and you can get the uh, IF. So, in this case it is a divide by 4. So, your what is a uh, means if you want to find this frequency you can use the same formula omega LO1 plus 1 by 4 omega LO1 and this is your omega IM. So, in this case if it is a uh, omega input not I am omega input which is a 5 by 4 omega LO1. So, you can get omega LO1 which is a 4 by 5 into omega input. So, if it is a 60 gigahertz in this case 
I, I, this is a receiver which is made at 60 gigahertz, then 4 by 5 into 60 that is a 48 gigahertz that is a yellow frequency. So, you, you, are, you need to design a PLL which is not a 60 gigahertz because if you are using a direct conversion receiver then you need to employ the uh, 60 gigahertz but in this case uh, you only need to use the 48 gigahertz and then there is a divide by 4 uh, on chip you can keep and then uh, directly you can down convert to the zero frequency. So, this is how a sliding IF will work and one more thing you need to be careful uh, while considering the IF frequency. So, here uh, there is a fractional bandwidth means instead of considering only IF frequency if there is a band of signal is applied then you, you should consider the uh, what is the input your fractional bandwidth of input which is given by bandwidth of IF. If you consider the half uh, LO then one third uh, if this is F2 one third F1 divided by one third F1 plus one third F2 by 2. So, this is a fractional bandwidth and fractional bandwidth uh, is given by delta omega by omega naught. So, if you you are uh, down converting by third uh, 1 by 3 then you should consider 1 by 3 F2 minus 1 by 3 F1 which is a down converted IF. Uh, same thing for RF frequency bandwidth fractional bandwidth at RF frequency it is given by F2 minus 1 F2 minus F1 by F2 plus F1 by 2. So, this is uh, while considering the uh, IF omega IF you should consider that it is a fractional down con means fractionally it should match. So, the fractional bandwidth of IF and fractional bandwidth of RF should match because this at this point your IF and RF fractional bandwidth should match so that there is a uh, you can down convert the complete band. There is a uh, problem of image will also come because here your omega i n is also no, uh, not equal to uh, the same frequency. So, when you uh, we, we will try to take one example here there is a if 2.4 gigahertz is your required down conversion frequency. Now, if you try to use, let us say there is a first case, if I try to use it divided by 2, that means the receiver architecture which is employed the divided by 2, then what will be the uh, frequency? We can directly call, write it down FLO which is equal to 2 by 3 into 2.4 which you can write it down as a 1.6 gigahertz. However, uh, if you consider 1.6 gigahertz as your desired frequency and if omega image because here this is your LO, then your omega image will be around 800 megahertz. So, here your 800, you are giving the input frequency which is 800 megahertz and then uh, because this is a 800 megahertz that we, we, that is the image which is coming into the GSM band. So, this 800 megahertz is coming into the GSM band. So, we should avoid divide by 2. Then, if you try to employ divide by 4 
architecture and if your FLO is equal to 4 by 5 into this, it will come roughly around 1.92 and your image if it is, uh, e, sorry, if this is a desired 1.92 and your image will something come here in the range of 1.48. So, you can, uh, your image frequency will not be the standard band. So, this is how you should choose your uh, frequency while uh, choosing the sliding IF. So, divide how much division that you are going to use that you should choose based on the your uh, IF at what frequency it is lying. So, this is how we should design the sliding IF uh, and that is also called a modern heterodyne architecture. Uh, we will discuss about more in detail in the direct conversion DC architecture in the next class. Thank you.